And now, Minion Works presents Freelance Heroism. This week's Freelance Heroism episode is brought to you by some special patrons who donated at the producer tier. Uh, we'd like to give a special shout out to Monique Walker, Chris Deeds, Chris Sones, Orient underscore Tiger, and Deesa's friend, whose actual name I can't remember, Ario Teabaggin. <laughs> Mr. Teabag, and we never remember your name, but thank you for supporting. <laughs> thank you. Hey, freelancers, welcome back to Freelance Heroism. I'm David. And I'm Rachel. And we're a D&D 5e actual play podcast. Our current campaign is The Curse of Strahd, a gothic horror-inspired setting in the dangerous fog-shrouded land of Ravenloft. While the setting is serious, our heroes are not. Will they actually be able to defeat the vampire lord Strahd and restore peace to Ravenloft? Or will they just steal goats and invoice villagers? Join us and find out on this episode, Adriatic Emotions. Last episode, Adri was under the assumption that both the professional and Shinakote were dead, as neither of them have responded to her sinnings, and after they were separated from the fight with the Four Horsemen of Strahd. In reality, the professional wanted to host his own funeral, and Shinakote was hanging out in a cave. That's because her friends are jerks. They are. The, profession <laughs> the professional tricked some Veliki townsfolk into bringing the body of his dead mirror-verse double to the church during morning service. Adri assumed it was her friend and began to cast Resurrection to bring him back to life. The professional, in his confessional persona, made himself known just before Chunakote's arrival. God, that would have been amazing to bring him back from the dead. <laughs> you can see him going along with it, too. I'm sure oh, he yeah. like very quickly realize what was going on. Be like, oh, yeah, I'm totally back now. Yep. Kavir in the flesh. <laughs> ah, that would have been amazing. Mm -hmm. He would have took out Lucian first. Oh, no. Then he would have moved. <laughs> and all of Adri's other friends are dead. <laughs> he would have gone after the Nick and Knack. He would have gone after. <laughs> They're still repairing my armor. Again. That holy, holy armor. <laughs> All puns intended. Uh, uh, I don't have anything funny to say right now. <laughs> well, uh, Deese isn't with us again, so you guys get David. Which I don't know is a blessing or a curse right now. <laughs> well, so I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure Deese. I think that the uh, the calling of the puppy mama just called to him again, and he. You know, had to go and take care of that. <laughs> Him and those dogs. He loves them. He does. <laughs> he enjoys nurturing and suckling them and just... <laughs> He's asked me not to... For us not to roast him in this intro again. He and I was like, I make no promises for David or myself. <laughs> <laughs> After she starts roasting him, she, and then she informs me, he asks us not he to. Yes, it's not to. No, it is a good cause to get in Lost Dogs. I mean, yes. it, it's kind of jacked up us to talk about him like that. <laughs> I mean, he's doing a public service. <laughs> Especially, you know, where he's from. My lifelong dream of taking my own How did I ruin your... You spoke at your funeral. And then you ripped up my costume. Yeah. Tried to out me in front of all the townsfolk. So mad. I was very unprofessional. <laughs> you had to know on some level Kavir was capable of that kind of thing. Yes, but Adri was also really sad because it seemed like all her friends were dead. 
and one of her dads is in jail. You were in the process of bringing him back to life. What does that mean, dead, to you, really? Well, they said that... You had to wait a whole hour with someone not conscious. You wait eight every day. (laughs) So you just should think of death like people sleeping. When we start this argument, if you don't... When we start this episode, that argument's coming out immediately. (laughs) Right as soon as we start. When you're all pissed off, Uh I'm going to be like, you were had an hour cast. No, go ahead. Put them back on. Put them back on. I want you to hear. <laughs> Look at this argument, all right? I got bleeped out of the last one. I don't get to hear it. No, no. This one's about the game. Though one could call the other a very good game. <laughs> ba dum bum Um. Anyway, I to, just there's wanna, follow-up you jokes. Save it. You want to save the argument for in character, if you want. But I think it's a very strong argument. I think this is more about Adri not being prepared to deal with nightmares. <laughs> she had one bad dream. Now She's, everyone else is miserable. Adri, Adri has never had a dream before. Right. One of her dads is in vampire jail. Her other dad might be ordered to kill her soon, and he might kill himself, so that way he doesn't have to kill her. Again, all about Adri. How many people do you think that your dad killed while he was a vampire? She doesn't think about that. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Because it's just my dad, my dad, my dad, not my dad, the serial killer. He's not a serial killer. That's what he did to live. He's a vampire. He killed people and drank their blood and ate their flesh. He... Doesn't you think you think he was a vegetarian fucking vampire? He was only eating heads of lettuce and not heads of people. <laughs> the motherfucker was ripping throats out and drinking it and having a blast. <laughs> and so was the other one. He's probably doing it right now. You know what I mean? They said the last time he came here, he killed a shit ton of people in the same town. In this town. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is, me pretending to be dead for an hour. Uh-huh. You were in the was- process of raising me. You had to deal with it for 45 more minutes and then everything was going to be fine. Unless your soul was not willing to come back or was not free to come back. or We've already had this argument. Or it just doesn't work because we're in Barovia and apparently this, this We've already work. had this argument about you raising the dead of someone and them choosing not to come back doesn't mean that you get to go through more steps. They didn't want to come back. It's on them. Just like you don't get to decide who dies. You're not judge, jury, and executioner. You also don't get to decide who lives. If they don't want to come back, that's on them. Okay, Maybe they I, went to heaven. Should Maybe I not awesome. raise you then if you die? Should I not I mean, you? for me, I would like for you to raise me. Well. But we've had this you're now standing over the coffin. Baby, come back. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is that we, we've had the discussion before. Mm-hmm. We've had this one. Okay. You keep leaning on it again. The, I'm going to look. Well, I don't think you can go to heaven when you're in Barovia. You don't know what's after there. Have you ever died and not come back? But I think that, like, didn't we find out that you can't, like, you can't, your soul can't leave Barovia. Right. But it could come back as a vampire. And like we just talked about with your dad, you could be having a fucking awesome time killing people. Maybe you like that shit. Maybe the person you're raising back to the dead was actually going to be the Hitler of Barovia and you just brought him back. <laughs> Maybe this is supposed to happen. Daddy daughter blood sucking dates. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the power that a cleric wields needs to be tempered by the knowledge that a cleric should have, right? A, a cleric should be able to understand the power that they wield and the potency they have over the timeline, essentially, right? You don't know by raising one person who could very well be an evil fuck. He might kill thousands of people. How many people do you think in the history of your life that you raised from the dead, got turned into a vampire later, and then killed hundreds of people? Uh, no one that Adri is raised. Are you sure? hmm How sure? Like, 100%. She didn't raise anyone before she 100%? Came to yet. Yeah. No, I mean, while you're here. You've raised people here before. How about those people in the street? How many of them are into sex trafficking? Did you do any research? (laughs) 
you're over here th- essentially by proxy I want a bunch of children in boxes and having them shipped to fucking Barovia I think everyone that Adri's raised from Veliki so far has been the tavern owner and then like the kids like their the kids, kids who are going into the and the tavern owner who's likely part of the whole ring <laughs> So what do you get we, a kickback? We, we saved those kids and turned and brought them to the tavern owner. Right. So he it's could sell like, them for profit. No, it's like his niece and nephew or something. That's what he told you. You did not check into it at did all. Did you check into it? I check into everything. Okay, well then No, but in this instance, that's not what happened. But it mm-hmm. could have. You didn't look into it. You have otherworldly okay. power, Ducky. Okay, so should I start like researching everyone before i raise them because i feel like adri doesn't have time to do that no you don't want to have time to do it i have plenty of time to research all kinds of shit okay but when you're you not know faking your death no when i'm not fucking being sad and drinking wine in my bedroom and kicking doors off hinges and fucking she didn't kick any doors Adri, how many times did you have lunch in one game? Can you answer the question? I know the answer. (laughs) Can you tell me? Once. I did not have four lunches in one game. You had four lunches in one game. It was the the wrap, the tongue, and then we had the prayer over the lunch the next day. And then uh, when we disappeared, you went off on your little spirit quest, (laughs) walking around town looking for fucking, I don't know, doodads to put on your dream journal or whatever. (laughs) All I'm saying mm-hmm. is that that's Kavir's job is to get everyone else whose life is like focused mm-hmm. to like step back for a second. Okay. Look at the wider array, okay. right? Uh-huh. Shunakote is down with like wolves, right? He, he loves the concept of nature. It's fair mm-hmm. in, in the way that it works. The strong kill the weak. But then we spend all day saving the weak from these monstrous strongs. Mm-hmm. Ah, so you're missing the point. You're missing the point. Continuation of the species. You have to take care of the young to continuation to continue the species. Right, but what happens when we save so old lady farm? She's old. She's not young. When do we do that? What are you talking about? We do that stuff all the time. Oh, okay. Well, because you write you write invoices for that shit. Right. I, I'm saying that my motivations are purely based on personal gain. So I'm living the nature life maybe more arguably stronger than anyone in the group. I'm looking out for me. I get the meat off the carcass. That's what I do. I perform a task, get the meat off the bones. The, the professional game is the hunt. And then the invoice is the, the, the fangs that I remove the gold flesh with. You call what you want, bro. Whatever lets you sleep at night. I'm just saying, if you had to kill one baby and then use the parts of that one baby to feed five babies, I by wouldn't not do doing it. My foraging skills are much better babies. than that. I'm just oh. saying that you're in a room locked up with six babies. <laughs> What's the scenario? I, How the oh, hell did I get there? Than that's happened <laughs> than being locked in a room with six babies. Oh, for God's sake! His brain got impregnated by a squid. You tried to go <laughs> swimming with Ghost Dad. Like, it wasn't it ghost happens. dad. It was just a ghost. It was a fake ghost. You think he had a kid? Did you ask? You didn't even do the research on whether or not he had kids. <laughs> Why would I research that? Just say You don't know he wasn't a ghost dad. Oh. This is the plausible deniability game, and I am the best at it. Uh-huh. <laughs> like I said, whatever lets you sleep at night. I mean, you could argue that then... Adri is removed completely from morality because she doesn't sleep at night. Uh, Elvish morality has got to be different than human morality. It could be. They do have longer lifespans. I I don't worry about that sort of thing. See, you like to think of it as you live longer, more fulfilling lives. I think that everyone lives about the same amount of fulfillment, but it takes elves way longer to get things. So like, Instead of learning math by the time you're 12, mm-hmm. it takes you to what, like 45 <laughs> to get math? I don't, I honestly, I don't know how that, how that works. With that. I know because it's mathematical, but you'll get there. 
Okay. No wonder everyone on this fucking podcast hates my guts. <laughs> everyone that listens is so fucking shitty to me. Yeah. Uh, and I, I have told people, no, no, really, he, in, in real life, he's not that bad. No, I, re- I, I really just, I, I ramp it up for this, but I, I, there are tendencies of mine that are like. <laughs> I'm going to cut out you saying that and just leave in you being mean to me. That's fine. <laughs> Look, yeah, man, let's, let's, let's t- try complete complete the illusion here. He's really a nice guy in real life. When the when when this thing is on, I'm totally content with being an asshole. If you ever look at me respond to any message we've ever had on Facebook, I'm very nice, always trying to be helpful. I respond to every comment that gets targeted to me. But while we're here in this game, <laughs> as this stands. I'm gonna do shit up, bro. <laughs> and a fine job you do. A fine job you do. Thank you. And I do mean that as a compliment. Thank you. But even if you didn't, thank you. So, uh, in the next games coming up, we're going to be selling ad space at the beginning and end of every episode. It'll be fifteen dollars for one thirty-second spot where you can kind of talk about your product or service or uh, whatever thing you want to advertise or, or even your podcast. If you want to be a competitor, whatever, don't compete too hard though. And if you want to get the spot at the end as well, that'll be $20 for both spots. So get a nice little discount for getting a full minute worth at the beginning and end of every episode and uh, kind of piggyback off our numbers. We've been doing pretty good lately, so it'll be, uh, it'll be good. What do you guys think? Anything else to add? Yeah, we, we're 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 on our way up. We keep getting more and more people pretty much every week. So it's a good chance for someone to get in on the you know the ground floor kind of, you know, before we're like you know got like five billion hits and stuff, and, and then you know like you know we're gonna have to charge more than that then. Like we'll five probably charge. Billion. We might charge like thirty dollars then. Dude, if we have five billion hits, fuck advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Five billion? I don't know. It's an, arbitrary, it's an arbitrary number. I don't know. Hey, if nothing else, we're definitely unique. We will undulate to whatever flavor you want to sell. Look at that. Undulate. Oh, you can't because it's an audio format. But <laughs> Well, yeah, I was going to say, we're going to have a hard time. We can... That wigglage is fucking fire, guys. Ooh, look at that. It's fucking whipping Woo. like one of those two. <laughs> That wiggle, I just, Reverse it. just sold six Toyotas. Just saying. Uh, ah, da, 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 da. I'm still doing it. Looking good. Man. Yeah. Jake's, Jake's Sexy grandpa it. time. Newer uh, uh. Datsuns. <laughs> no, 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 man. That, that's a Dodge. Check, check out my spaceship. It's a Dodge. We're going to sell an AMC Pacer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a Gremlin. Definitely the Gremlin. Okay. So Straw hits uh, <laughs> Leaky with the meteor and ends the game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't sold any advertising yet, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about for our vegetarian fans? <laughs> oh, sure. I'm sorry, too much. Can't be meteor. Can we, yeah. can, we, can, we, can we be hit with a bean ear? Oh, dear God. Yeah, I, think I, can, I think I can summon some fruit for you. Okay, cool. We were hit by a large peach. And after the town settled and the dust settled and the death was there, James just climbed out of the peach. <laughs> God damn it. Damn it, James. Our old rival, James. Spider. And what else was in the fucking peach with him? But hell, dude, there was a spider for sure. <laughs> and last time on Freelance Heroism, we were sitting on a bench. <laughs> we were sitting in a, a different episode. It was definitely a different one of those takes. Mm-hmm. Yes, but it had to be done. Why? <sighs> because the confessional was not dead. Amen. Long live the confessional. Even though they did everything they could to make Adrian think they were dead. Yeah, yeah, they did. They I just made bubble noises. You can add whatever context to that. You want. <laughs> Shh, I am adding context. Quiet. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that he sprinkling with his elbow out like context bay. <laughs> um, we just need a pinch. Just a smidge. I'm just sprinkling some adverbs on this motherfucker. Hold on. 
we left off with Adric storming out of the temple yeah. and the other two standing on the other side of the temple with both the gods declared of the morning lord and the wolf mother in their glory. Adrian, one howls at the moon. One what is on your mind at a time like this? <laughs> Why? So Strahd can know? Yes. So Strahd can know. She's mad, but she's also really relieved. All right. Now tell Dr. Minna how that makes you feel together. <laughs> mad and relieved. I don't know if there's a word for that. For what? Mad and relieved. <laughs> Adri. Adriana. <laughs> it's okay. She's used to carrying the weight of her forehead. She can carry the weight of the world a bit longer. Yeah. Adriatic. It's not just for seas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Take that geography bitch from my high school. <laughs> I'm kidding. Miss Mulholland was awesome. I'm sorry. I was just goofing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what does Adrian do as she leaves the temple? I'm going back to my house. To the house. You go back to the house. She said that all sad. She's like, I'm going back to my house. I'm going back to my room. <laughs> you find the wolves in the room again, waiting for you. Are they in my room? Yeah. Waiting for you. I just want to be sad and alone <laughs> they brought you a cure album <laughs> <laughs> no uh Adrian's just gonna like sit down and just be upset i'm gonna stand outside of her uh window and i'm gonna hold a bard above my head <laughs> Play the one I told you from the movie with the with John Cusack. Go. <laughs> so I don't know whatever they. Oh doing my lord. In the church, but that's what Idris doing. I'm just gonna trot back to the to like the cabin. Idris yeah. doesn't return your call seven times. <laughs> <laughs> what? You gotta see the movie. Do yeah. I get do I get a cool cutaway like they do in High Fidelity? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to make a mix bard. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm outside holding your father. <laughs> get him. Oh, my Lord. That, that's... Think oh. Otis, Redding, Otis Redding, hard to handle. Number five. Uh, I'll get the rest of them as we go. All right. I'm I'm just gonna trot back to the cabin and I'm gonna let out a howl and see if the wolves are around. Cause I know they were coming back, but I don't know if they made it or not. So, so in Age's room, a howl is heard across the city. Fauna looks up. Storm shoots out of her room, leaving her alone with Fauna. Fauna gets up and begins to walk after Storm, excited. Master's home. And now Adri's really alone in her room, in her house, listening to the Cure. Listen to the cure. Yeah, she's With listening the to my outside in a bar. Pro, pro, it's probably kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. I'm not. I'm not holding a bar. I was just goofing. Those weird black sunglasses, that black coat. <laughs> the, the, the coat, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Say anything. <laughs> um, I'm gonna follow after AJ, but before I do, I'm gonna like run over to the dead body. And I'm gonna like flip him over my shoulder. I'm like, oh shit, he's still wet. I forgot he's still wet. Got he's still wet. <laughs> Lucian's like, I'll piss this she. You can hear from downstairs. I'm gonna be like, uh, pretty pissed. Uh, by the way, everyone else, uh, we're gonna have an encore next Sunday. Make sure to be here. The town's like, yay, you haven't changed a bit. I changed <laughs> three times in order to get this to work. What are you talking about? <laughs> They can act to you alive. They're like, oh, shit. How are you going to tell a person who is just in disguise as another person giving himself a fucking eulogy to say he hasn't changed? What? You're very full of yourself. Yeah. yeah. I'm full of the stuff that was on myself now, too, from the fucking river. Like seaweed. Right? That shit stinks. You see Nick and Axe slipping on the back like, oh, shit, he's alive. Where are my books? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> There's two Nicks in town. You guys know that? 
two Knicks. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys got Victor and Nick. Oh, and, and the gnome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those That'd are the a- ones they tipped in your metal supply that are gone now because they're fixing Age's armor again. That'd be an oddly specific Wheel of Fortune puzzle. <laughs> right? Nick and Vic or Nick and Knack? Whatever. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to go follow. As soon as I get into the house, I'm going to open the door. And I'm just going to toss my body down. <laughs> Serena sees you. Throw it down the stairs. She yells up the stairs. Miss Adri, Kavir's here. Thank you. I'm going to look at her and be like, you need to shut the fuck up. Okay? <laughs> she said a notifier if I saw you. What the fuck does that mean? You know you're not supposed to give my detailed whereabouts. And <laughs> I'm sorry. Go, go make the master something. professional is here. Thanks. I'm going to like fold my hands. I'm going to lean forward and be like, you are teetering on the edge of unemployment you don't pay me that much you're right and it'll be even less when you have to live outside <laughs> miss adri won't let you do that miss adri is a little tied up right now with the bindings of grief and what appears to be anger i think i, I don't know I don't, human emotions are weird to me or I'm not elf. A human. Whatever. Emotions in general are awkward for me. She just looks at you. Taps your shoulder. I'm very firm on anger. I know how that one oh. works. By the way, you might want to shower. Serena says if she walks away. I swear to God, I'm going to hire another housekeeper who is just going to be a bitch to her. <laughs> she doesn't have to do any chores at all. She's just going to follow her around. And give her a hard time. <laughs> What's her name again? I cannot Serena. remember. Serena. I'm going to name Irene. her Venus. Irina comes. <laughs> follow her around and just give her shit. Irina comes out. Oh. You too? It's professional. What's that smell? It's the other me down the stairs. Oh. Hey, Adri's looking for you. Yeah, I know. All right. I smell you hung out with Ragnik all the time. Yeah, this is different, though. I mean, he, him just, he smells like sweat and must and just nasty. You get kind of used to it. This is like dead river water. <sighs> I'm so sorry that my my drowning has inconvenienced everyone. You officially, you officially smell worse than Ragnik. Wait, you died? Please go do something that is far away from me. And I'm going to start walking up the stairs. She points to the door. Point- Can I go outside now? No. Motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to stop halfway up the stairs and be like, I- I'm going to move. <laughs> I have to move. <laughs> I'm just going to. I'm going to. You're in a house of teenage women, dude. I'm going to put. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put the top it's like part a of that house. Soap opera, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not so disappointed. I'm not. I'm not upset about that wolves bane and stuff you put in the paint, man. That's all cool, man. I, I build my own place. It's good. I'm just saying, my end goal is to add yet another <laughs> girl. I, I mean, Arena's like 15. Serena's like 16. Adri's 117. I mean, like, bro. What's the latest term abortion I can manage? <laughs> What about the 154th trimester? <laughs> okay. I, I'm i going to continue going upstairs. This has been a clusterfuck. Do we want to add anyone else to my roster of annoyances, David? Do you want to throw down like a guy who, like, Bluggard is here and he wants to talk to me Will about it? No. Actually, Storm, Storm probably would have ran down the stairs just as he was coming up and knocked him over or something. <sighs> <laughs> you actually do see one of Chudakote's dogs running out with one of your shoes. They're wolves. Which wolves. shoe? What shoe? One of your costume shoes. One that I use frequently. Um, you had it on one of the models downstairs. I can make a new one. I'm not chasing Fauna, a dog through the streets. <laughs> Fauna passes you, looks up at you. Kind of like shocked to see you. Goes downstairs. I'm gonna make a weird face at it, like, "Who? Who? Get the fuck out of here!" Goes and leaves. 
cleaning lady close the door straight comes out my apologies master professional Close fantastic keep that up i like that that's a good way to get back on my good graces but if you could do it with like less talking that'd be great. <laughs> she kind of just looks at you from the door and closes it see that wasn't so hard was it i'm gonna continue up the stairs again <laughs> and then the dark souls boulder comes running down <laughs> yep <laughs> AG just hears the back of her head. Ah, damn it, they're alive. And the voice goes away again. We're going to knock on her door. Did you close your door? Or did you just kick it in when you came in? <laughs> I don't know how you do doors. Uh, She's a teenage elf. Who knows? I slammed it after I went in my <laughs> door. I slammed my door behind me so it's like off the hinges. <laughs> like flew through the wall. Can I get a straight check on that slim? You actually want me to? It's more uh, fun if you do. Uh, not great. Ten. Good. Okay, so it's actually not off the hinges. It didn't actually even close. It slammed and then just opened that up. That annoying back. thing where it kind of swings yep. back open a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you you see an empty bottle of wine on the floor. Adri sitting on the bed, angry. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, Knock on the door, just hard enough. Wearing to her old armor that you didn't give her. Why are you bringing up details that don't need to be said? I don't. She, the reason she's not wearing my armor is not because she's disappointed with me. As DM will try to start shit here. <laughs> I was there when she got the bullet holes. I know. I'm gonna knock on the door, just hard enough so that it swings open. And then that's obviously her inviting me in, so I'm going <laughs> to just walk in. We're going to have to uh, talk about the help downstairs. Why? Well, I'm not 100% certain, but I think she's been stealing my jewelry. <laughs> no, I th she's annoying. She likes you and she hates me. You're mean to her. When's the last time you paid her? I don't have any money. Well, I no, I have money. <laughs> you said you said you were paying her. I can. Mm-hmm. What? Look, that's not the point. The point is, you know, whatever. This is a deflection, clearly. You, you seem upset. Wipe the tears off her off her face. Like, yeah, because I thought you were dead. You were in the process of bringing me back. Shouldn't that have made you happy? It might not have worked. Why wouldn't it have worked? Because Father Lucian said that sometimes when they bring people back, it doesn't work or they come back crazy. Right. So it might not have worked. But you were trying anyway. Yeah. So you were deciding to lean negative, even though... Personally, you're a fairly positive person, almost annoyingly so. But in this instance, you chose to, you know, lean to the sad, the sad side of the argument. Why is that? Because I thought, like, maybe I wouldn't be able to bring you back. I was worried that it wouldn't, like, it wouldn't work. Hmm. Do you think this has anything to do with you losing your mother? I'm going to I'm going to bring her back. I couldn't before. But I think I'm almost ready to be able to bring her back. I'm going to think for a second. Wish? No. I So when I first figured out how to bring the dead back, it was only for like a minute. But now it's like if they're dead a few days, I can still bring them back. But I think given some more time, if they've been dead for even longer, I'll be able to bring them back. Hmm. And do you think she would want to come back? I hope so. Hmm. See, I'm sort of in the same boat as you. I have uh, 
yet another uh, young female downstairs that I am in the process of trying to uh, to bring back. Mm-hmm. And it's complex and it's difficult sometimes. Yeah. But uh, I mean, there are, there are outs. There are always outs. Situations like this can be solved. They can be fixed. What I'm upset about is that you had no faith in me. You thought I was dead. You didn't. What happens when you use a sending spell and there is no target? I don't know. Never... Yes, you do. You've done it before. But it's always to someone specific. And when they're not there? Well, it goes to wherever they are, but you didn't answer me. And then Chunakoti didn't answer bubbles. me. Bubbles. Do you, you think he got the water instead? I don't. I don't know. I don't know how it would work. <laughs> but you didn't. Look, you didn't say anything. You didn't. You can't. It was a thing. joke. You're being too serious. I thought you were dead. <sighs> this might sound weird. Okay. So I just I'm prefacing that. You say a lot of weird things. True. This might. I don't know if it's going to help or make it worse. Okay. I, it, it felt good that you were sad at my death. Does that make sense? Yeah. I get, yeah. Good. I'm glad that we had this talk. Okay. So we have things that we have to take care of. Uh, first, we have to go get your chest plate back from what I assume is the second or third mm-hmm. attempt at repair. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much did they charge you? We didn't talk about money. I just told them to fix it. It's not normally how I do it, but if it works, it works. Uh, next, maybe I should talk to some people about helping Trinacote finish that cabin. Because I feel yeah. like that's going to be an impediment. Yeah, I feel like that needs to get done. Um, one of my dads is in jail in the castle. Been there. Not your dad, I've, but I've been in jail. <laughs> right. I've been in your dad, too. <laughs> but I'm uh, my other dad is the uh, the piper that we faced, and he has orders to kill you and Chunakote. Right. So we have to go take care of the three horsemen. I can't kill my dad. Right. Which is why I was looking into a solution. Okay. Also, I... I think I slept or I passed out. I wasn't conscious like normal. Um, and apparently when that happens, Strahd can send me to some kind of like nightmare dream prison. It Is he still talking to you? Yeah, I can still hear him. And he can see what you see? Sometimes. Um... <laughs> I'm going to grab her by the side of the head. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at how my hands gestured, by the way. That's funny. <laughs> grab her, like. Like I was holding a hoagie or something. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to grab her by the side of the head and I'm going to shake her head. And I'm going to look straight into her eyeballs and be like, we're coming for you, motherfucker. <laughs> like, okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, one more second. I'm going to grab her head again. I'm going to shake her head. And I'm going to like lean in and be like, I killed your big dude and I'm coming for the rest. In the back of Aegis' mind, she hears a small voice of Strahd. I don't consider myself a violent man, but I think I'm going to have to kill someone here. Uh, I don't hear the response. God, I have a good reply. I'll tell him, I'll tell him what Strahd said. You should kill the rest of those soldiers. They're piss poor, substandard, low quality. Probably didn't pay much for them, huh? <laughs> you probably skipped. You probably, went on, you probably went on the yellow pages. <laughs> yeah, bad you know guy, me. Henchman. one bad guy, yep. Triple A bad guy henchmen's. You got me. They're generic. I just had to pull them out of the papers. Uh, note to self: Kill Strahd. Burn castle. Oh, and take chair. <laughs> um. The shit, I will do in your coat. After 
Kabir lets go of Aja's head the second time, she's gonna hug him. Oh, gross. Uh, uh, I'm gonna like, try to walk away and drag her. I need a dex check from Kavir to keep balance of that heavy head attached to him. Oh, God. Rude. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> what are my poor right. rules? <laughs> what are my poor <laughs> Um, I'm glad that you're not dead. <sighs> hmm. Well, thank you. I, su- I suppose. Okay, are we done here? Yes. Okay. Let go of him. You're going to have to get some of that seaweed off you. Apparently, the people. You know what? Go walk down and let them smell you. I bet you they tell you you smell fantastic. And that's why they're getting fired. That's why we're hiring new staff. <laughs> oh, I love the olive drab that you're going with today, Miss Adri. <laughs> Bitch, I made you pancakes last week. Does Adri go downstairs? Yeah, I'll go downstairs. Serena kind of looks over. Oh, you got in your computer. I did. You're going to blame her stench on me. (laughs) It's fan-fucking-tastic. This whole house is full of bullshit. All right. Did Kavir come down, too? I don't know. Yeah, I'm coming down, sir. You know what? Wait, smell check, smell check. Someone give me a roll. Smell check? (laughs) What the fuck? Hell, I can smell them all the way in my cabin. (laughs) All right. So Fauna and Storm hit your house, Trinacote. They make it to the cabin. Hey, guys. Um, Stormy immediately nuzzles up and Angie drops Kavir's shoe at your feet. Aw, oh, thank you, girl. Fauna makes the way in, nuzzles you. And hey, boy. Starts looking for food. Oh, I've got plenty of food there. How are the kids doing? How's Gertie? He looks there. He he um, nods to the back room. Or to the back where Gertrude's at. All right. Well, I'm going to go back, see how everything's laid out, what's going on. She's asleep. Uh, Sleeping away the afternoon like a teenage girl. Aw, poor thing. I can't wake her up. <laughs> I mean, like, has work been accomplished since I've been gone? <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, I mean, the town has worked on the outside of it, but you can tell she mm. pretty much just kind of sat there and snacked and went around town. And uh, heavy well, teenage girls in this episode, <laughs> right? Yeah. As yeah. DM, not my fault. We should call this episode "Girls Just Want to Have Funky Dispositions." <laughs> <laughs> I draw the line is seven under turned girls. <laughs> I, I, I get well. I'm gonna kind of go over and just nudge her a little bit. She kind of growls for a second until she realizes you. Hey. Well, hi there, sweetie. You're not dead. Oh, you sound so disappointed. The whole town says you were dead. Ah, uh, the rumors of my expiration were grossly exaggerated. Last time I believe Adri. Well, she's usually spot on with things, but Lucian came said she or Father Lucian said she came back all distraught saying that you guys were dead. You guys got killed and Well, yeah, he's he's not quite what he's uh rumored to be. He's a lot you know, there's a lot there's a lot of talk there. So Kavir's alive too? Oh yeah. Believe me, it takes a little more than something like that to take the professional out. He's rather uh, uh, clever, I guess would be a good word. Hey, what do we call him? Because he always gets offended at whatever we call him. He just, just don't call him late for dinner. He'll be all right. You can call me late for dinner. I don't care. Just <laughs> fuck it. Don't tell everybody your name. It, it doesn't matter. Everyone in the universe knows where the fuck I'm at now. So... <laughs> Makes you feel better. They're all trapped in Barovia. Good. I hope they all <laughs> fucking croak. I hope they all get eaten by a frog who croaks and croak inside the croaker. 
<laughs> Somewhere there's a half orc on us with a road sign. I know the truth of the professional. <laughs> <laughs> I like to. I I know we've talked about it before, but I really like the idea of Ragnick walking backwards along a like a street, holding a sign like at the end of the Hulk. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Da 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 da. Just dragging his sword as he walks. <laughs> the sword that I haven't drawn on him in fucking forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she's like, "Oh, Fawn and Storm are back." Well, oh, of Fawn they are. and Storm are back. She shrugs. He's really? Like, go clean up the yard. Oh, honey, it's not that bad. They Please just got out. here. I've been. And they just got here, so you don't have to worry about it yet. Calm down. Looks like you got a whole lot done here. Yeah, I got right on top of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, real proud of you there, dearie. How about how about next time we try just a little harder to follow through with things, okay? All right. That would really make me not want to rip your throat out, then. I thought we were kind of past that when we left the other world. Well, yeah, to a degree, but, you know, we're still wolves, honey. Speaking of that, are we allowed to date outside the pack? And who did you have in mind, young lady? Nobody. You're lying. There's a chocolate maker that lives at the end of the street. And I was kind of hoping I could be in his pack. A fudge pack, if you will. Oh, God. I'm not even, no. No. <laughs> just, just no. <sighs> so ask later? We'll discuss it. He's like shaking a magic eight ball. It is decidedly so young one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, my my gaming group actually uses a goddamn magic eight ball when they can't decide on something. They will actually use a magic eight ball to decide what to do. It's really funny. The scary thing is the eight ball usually gears them pretty well, gets them to the right spot. Anyway, we're going to get back to work, and I am going to make sure that my dear little Gertie is up and moving. Shit. All right. She looks around. Just make sure Adrian ain't here so I have to pay money again. <laughs> All right, I've got to go make sure we've got enough enough food stocked up. So you get moving here and make sure the kids are moving and doing what they can. And I will be back. I expect much more accomplished than has been. Thank you. She gives you two thumbs up. I just give her a little growl in the back of my throat. All right, Fauna. Stormy, come on. All right, so I'll go out in the woods and do a little bit of uh, foraging for the town. All right. Like, I can, I can take, I get like 12 people a day I can feed, so I figure that's definitely helping out. I'll do that in the meantime. Sounds good, sounds good. And what is the professional up to? Besides I am, like swamp? I'm going to clean off the jacket using my spells. And then I am going to uh, toss him in the corner. <laughs> He's becoming increasingly more disrespected as time goes on. I could have just pressed the digitation to you, you know. Yeah, I have it too. Okay. But I needed the swamp smell in order to sell the illusion earlier. And then AG stormed off and I was like, uh, she's going to, I don't know, go listen to sad music and cut herself or something. I, I had to go check on her to make sure she wasn't. Like, she I don't did, know. She did, the, she did that yesterday when she was digging bullets out of her body. Look, you have to understand that Kavir had a fucking daughter that he treated like a drill sergeant. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he was a teacher, not a dad. So like having all these girls around is like karma fucking smacking <laughs> them around. <laughs> it's very upsetting. <laughs> I had no plan on adding that many females to your house, bro. Yeah, either did I. <laughs> I feel like that kind of snuck up on us. <laughs> I didn't take Arena. You see me counter drafting boys? <laughs> like trying to get them in here? 
Yep. And then they're over here like, we're gonna steal some of the boys. We're gonna add some more girls. I'm like, God. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm gonna clean off my desk. All right. And I'm going to lay out some flat parchment. I'm going to write a or sketch out a, a quick drawing, real quick, like a charcoal profiling of each of the people that's still alive in that. Uh, the group or horsemen. All right. I'm going to write the basic information of their attack patterns and how they react to things like profiling who they are. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to, I'm still going to have the big one, but I'm going to draw him so that his like shoulders hit the top of the page and his face is off. And then I'm going to cross him out. I drew him just so I could cross him the fuck out. (laughs) All right. And I'm like, I'm going to look at Adri. I'm going to say, are you ready? To go after them? We're going to plan a murder. Okay. Who are we murdering? I should have asked that before I said okay. (laughs) You're under contract. (laughs) We're going to murder the ones that tried to murder us. That seems fair, right? Yes. Including dad. No, he didn't try to murder me. He tried to murder us. (laughs) Look, I know nepotism's real big in your fucking world, but not over here. He didn't give a shit about us. He's he, Strad told he has to do what Strad says. I'm gonna go ahead and make a notation, capture if possible. If possible is in capitals. How many dads do you need? I need both of them. You need both dads? Yeah. Man, I didn't even have one. You get two. It's bullshit. Well, I didn't. I didn't know I was gonna get another dad when we went to a mirror universe. How about you donate one to someone who needs one? You were go find a kid who needs a dad. Donate a dad. You hung out with one of them. Hashtag dump truck is now delivering dads <laughs> anywhere in the continents of the United States and Malaysia. <laughs> I think the first person we need to take care of mm-hmm. is that damn, what's it called? Ranger, hunter, bow smith, gunman. Yes. Whoever the fuck he is. Mm-hmm. He needs to go down. Yes. Because I'm not paying for any more armor. <laughs> <laughs> then we find a way to eliminate your dad. And then we take out. Uh, that chick who I'm just going to call Storm from the X-Men, even though chronologically that is an anachronism. Mm-hmm. It would not have existed in this universe or in this time. Right. But I feel like I could have probably made that connection. Yeah. Let's just call her uh, Thunderfucker. I can't say that, but you can call you, her that. Say it in Elvish. What, what do you want to call her? I'm going to call her that. Storm Mage. Storm mate, that's so boring. You don't know how to plan a murder. Pay attention. What? <laughs> you have to give them diminutizing names. Oh. Like that guy over there, his name's Boom Dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's the gun guy. Because clearly that's a phallic reference. And his dog <laughs> is named Lunchbox. <laughs> and uh Storm Mate just doesn't fit. You're gonna have to come up with something else. Oh. Hold on. I want to look at some Elvish translations. Okay, yeah, yeah. Give me a give me an Elvish an Elvish insult. Whatever Ludo would have told you. You could call her Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> How about Bolt Butt? <laughs> Bolt Butt. I mean, it's easy enough. Adrian can say butt, right? Yeah, Adrian can say butt. This is so weird. You can say any of those fucking words you need to, but she just won't. <laughs> My mom said I wasn't supposed to. You drink. just got drunk last night. I didn't. I drank a whole bottle and I didn't feel anything. I thought that that was a supposed whole to make you feel better. Yeah, I thought it was supposed to like make you feel better. You have to apply the correct dosage. <laughs> well, I don't know. I when just... you make a when you make a bandage, you don't just tie a piece of thread around the wound. You have to use enough. I thought a whole bottle was, like, enough. 
Mm, no. no. They put them in that bottle so you feel accomplished when you're done with one. <laughs> Storm who? What? What? I'll send it to her in a message. Okay. Is this something Ludo taught me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be like Grundle Puppet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll say that. Hold on. Let me, let me verify the translation one more time. Okay. <laughs> Taint stain. <laughs> Shart farmer. <laughs> no, yeah it, yeah. it comes up both the same. All right. Do you have a translator? An Elvish translator? It's a convert uh, from English to one of the Elvish languages from Tolkien. Which it, one? Um, uh, uh, Sindarin. Right on. So. Um, okay. I'll say that. I assume Ludo told me it was some sort of like noble insult before exactly. like before like two people are gonna do like some sort of like fencing for someone's honor. What? But it's actually a really <clears throat> terrible insult, I assume. You know people don't actually do that, right? That's just something the bards say in stories. Oh. Normally when two people are sword fighting like that, one of them kicks the other one or throws ball bearings or trips them. And then they stabbed them with a short knife they had in their pocket. <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't seen that. So. Uh, oh, God. Hold on. Say, say that Elvish name again. Say it again. Yeah. What? The Elvish name that you used for the storm lady. <laughs> storm who? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to giggle. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny, but okay. I don't either. I don't speak oh. Elvish. I'm going to insight Kavir. You do speak Elvish. I do speak Elvish. I know. I'm just trying to lie. I'm going to insight him. Do we know if they all travel together? I got a 24 in my insight to Kavir. Yeah, you know I was lying. <laughs> I told you I was lying. Yeah, but I was rolling it, and I wanted to add the numbers. Do you know if they travel together? That you do not. You just know that they attacked you as a team. You also know that Ludo has only been with them a short time. As in after you guys lost him, at, or lost the first Ludo at the Lambert Temple, and he disappeared. This he, was the acting pretty, he, he was acting pretty controlled then, too. Unable to yeah. damage the Rahadin after yeah. a certain point. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, one well, guess John is probably tired of his free will by now. Yeah. We could probably uh, maybe track him. Yeah. If only we knew someone who is a qualified tracker. Yeah, if only, huh? It's unfortunate God. that our only, our only tracker is now taking up fucking carpentry. <laughs> Bob the Builder over here is too busy to go hunt. We'll tell that. We'll tell. Maybe we'll tell Chunicote that they are residing in a much nicer cabin, a hardware store. With <laughs> you, you could tell Chunicote that they're staying at Grandma's house, and he'll go. Oh right. my gosh! Their house is made of straw, you know what? sticks <laughs> and stuff. Once again, we want to thank you guys for listening to Freelance Heroism. We hope you're having just as much fun listening as we are playing. Visit us at facebook.com slash freelance heroism and leave us a like. If you want to see our adventures in comic form, The Professional illustrates our misadventures and more at 1d4rounds.com. If you want to support us, consider donating. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Keep an eye out for rewards as we add them. Our theme music is Investigation by Devil Music, used under the Creative Commons license. You can find a link in the show notes. Our cast includes me, Dees Cassius, as Master Kivir the Professional, Rachel Moore as Adri the Ducky Cleric, 
Jake Sipple as Chunakote, the Lupine Loose Cannon. And last but not least, our DM and Dr. Midnight, David Walker. Questions or comments? Send an email to freelanceheroismpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, the invoice is in the mail.